Now discuss about the derivatives of the pharyngeal arches. Here you can see this is these are the pharyngeal arches. Here is dorsal aorta. Here is aortic sac and ventral aorta. If you see. These are two ventral aorta. These are two ventral aorta, and here join to form aortic sac, and here is so this is dorsal aorta. These are dorsal aorta. These are ventral aorta, and here is first arch artery. This is second arch artery. This is third. This is fourth. This is fifth arch artery. This is sixth arch artery. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth arch artery. This is ventral aorta. This is dorsal aorta, and these are arch arteries connected to ventral aorta with dorsal aorta. First is in the first arch, in second is second arch, third is third arch, fourth is fourth arch, fifth is fifth arch, and sixth is sixth arch. And you know this fifth arch artery just after its formation, fifth. Arch is absent. That's why this arch artery is absent. Just after formation, this arch artery become disappear. So I am showing here the interrupted line like this. So this is fifth arch artery which become disappear. And also this first arch artery. This also become disappear. Second also become disappear. First and second also become disappear. A small portion of the first arch artery persist and forms the maxillary artery. This form the maxillary artery. And a small portion of the second arch artery persist and form the Stapedial artery. This is the stapedial artery, and also higher artery, stapedial and higher artery. This third, fourth, and sixth arch artery persist, and these forms the various important vessels. Initially, first of all, we'll take the fourth arch artery. This is fourth arch artery. This fourth arch artery. This is fourth arch artery. This is aortic sac. This portion aortic sac. This is aortic sac. And this is left horn. This is left horn. Sorry, this is left horn. This is right horn. This is left horn. This is right horn of the aortic sac. So this left horn of the aortic sac. Forms the proximal part of the arch of aorta, that is ascending part of the arch of aorta, ascending. And here, this part, this portion, this right horn, forms the brachiocephalic artery. This is brachiocephalic artery. And after this, this fourth arch artery from here. This is fourth arch artery from the subclavian artery. 
This is part of subclavian artery. This fourth is fourth arch artery. From here to here, it forms the first part of the right subclavian artery. And next part is formed by dorsal aorta. This is dorsal aorta. So next part is formed by dorsal aorta. This is second part. And third part is here. That is seventh cervical intersegmental artery. So from here to here, this is right subclavian artery. This is third part of the right subclavian artery. First, second, third. First, drive from fourth arch. This is fourth arch artery. Second, from dorsal aorta of the right side, from here to here. And this is seventh cervical intersegmental artery. This is seventh cervical. Inter segmental artery. So from here to here, this is right subclavian artery. This is first part, this is second part, this is third part. So first, second, third part of the right subclavian artery on the right side. And this is a left horn. This is left horn. You see here, this is fourth arch. This fourth arch forms the arch of Yota. Like this. So this horn forms the ascending Yota. This is part of ascending Yota. This is arch of Yota. And here is position of Seventh cervical intersegmental. This is seventh cervical intersegmental artery on left side. This seventh cervical intersegmental artery on left side it forms the subclavian artery. So here subclavian artery is formed. And this is descending aorta. So from here to here, this is descending aorta. And now we we'll discuss about the third arch artery. This third arch artery on the right side it forms common carotid artery. This is common carotid artery, which arises from Brachiocephalic artery, this is common carotid artery, and it also joins with dorsal aorta. This is common carotid artery, it joins with the dorsal aorta here and turns like this. So, this is common carotid and this is internal carotid and here a bud arise this form the external carotid artery so this is external carotid artery this is common carotid artery from here to here and this is internal carotid artery so internal carotid artery is formed by distal part of third pharyngeal arch artery and also dorsal aorta this is dorsal aorta and on left side here this is dorsal aorta this is third arch artery it gives branch this is external carotid artery this is internal carotid artery and here is common carotid artery. So from arch of aorta, this is common carotid artery and subclavian artery like this. On left side, 
and on the right side brachiocephalic artery like this and this gives internal carotid and external carotid artery and that thing the dorsal aorta between this part and this here between third and fourth arch between third and fourth arch it also disappear and this part is known as ductus carotidus this is known as ductus this part now here is pulmonary trunk this is pulmonary trunk this is sixth arch artery this is sixth arch artery this is proximal part of the sixth arch artery here is distal part so this distal part degenerated and proximal part here is turned towards the developing lung and this is left side here this proximal part gives turn towards the developing lung and this distal part it also present this is ductus arteriosus this part is known as ductus arteriosus during embryonic life blood passes through this and goes into the descending thoracic aorta and just after birth it closes functionally and about one month after the birth it closes anatomically and in, in form of ligament it persists throughout the life that is ligamentum arteriosum this is ligamentum arteriosum after birth this is known as ligamentum arteriosum so here in left side this is persists and in right side this portion distal portion of the sixth arch artery become disappeared here and also here the descending this portion from here to here this is dorsal aorta this portion also become this appear on the right side so from here to here the dorsal aorta become this appear so you have seen the derivatives of the third fourth and sixth arch artery and also first gives a small part of first this appear only gives maxillary artery and second most part of this appear and gives stapedial artery and also higher artery <coughs> here one important relation you can see here is vagus nerve here is vagus nerve it gives a recurrent laryngeal nerve which hooks below this and turns upward this is vagus nerve it gives a recurrent laryngeal nerve initially it passes like this here you can see this distal portion become disappear and also here is fifth arch fifth arch become disappear that's why this recurrent laryngeal nerve it shifted here it turns from here like this on the right side on the left side this persist throughout the life in form of the ligament of arteriosum so on left side it presents here and on right side it shift upward due to absence of the distal part of the fourth pharyngeal arch artery and fifth arch so this is all about the arteries derived from the arteries uh, derivatives arterial derivatives of the pharyngeal arch artery pharyngeal arch artery forms these arteries thank you